September 2015, the United Nations released its updated Development Agenda, Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It was adopted by 193 member states of the United Nations. This agenda outlined 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, for achievement by 2030. These ambitious goals seek to eradicate poverty and hunger, improve health and well-being, promote gender equality, ensure clean water and energy generation, build sustainable cities, protect the biophysical environment and more. The 17 SDGs resulted from intergovernmental discussions that reflect a diversity of concerns and interests. In contrast to the preceding Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, the SDGs apply to all countries and citizens, irrespective of their level of development. For wealthier countries, this domestic as well as regional focus necessitates considering the development, health and environmental status of national and regional issues in a holistic manner. The current UN Development Agenda and SDGs were developed through the leadership of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, established at the UN Conference on Sustainable Development in 2012, sometimes referred to as the Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit. The driving agenda for the SDGs was founded on the three pillars of sustainable development, social, economic and environmental, with strong governance supporting their attainment. This was integrated into the unfinished business of the MDGs, where health had been perceived as dominant. Improving physical health remains part of the SDGs with its own dedicated goal, SDG 3. But the SDG structure communicates that achieving overall health is dependent on comprehensive sustainable development, where poverty eradication is now placed as the central focus. Each of the 17 goals is explained through a range of targets. For each of the targets are indicators which can be used to evaluate progress against the targets and therefore against the goals. If we use the example of SDG 6, the goal is to ensure access to water and sanitation for all. SDG 6 is then described by eight targets. For each of these eight targets are one or more indicators that detail how these targets can be monitored for progress in implementation. For example, the SDG target 6.1 to provide safe drinking water is measured by the percentage of population using safely managed drinking water services. Beyond SDG 6, water is explicitly mentioned in relation to SDG 3, 11, 12 and 15. This reflects the interdependence of SDG 6 with other goals. As we can see from SDG 6 on water, sanitation and hygiene, each goal is likely connected to other goals. Many commentators, including LeBlanc, identified that more than half of the goals and their targets explicitly referred to at least one other goal. In fact, more than 10% of targets linked to three or more goals. Such interlinkages can be understood through practical examples. For example, a woman who has given birth to a daughter cannot achieve optimal physical, social and mental well-being for herself and her child without sufficient nutrition, access to clean water and sanitation, gender equality and adequate financial resources. However, the SDGs are not published in a coherent systemic structure that displays these influences of the goals on each other, both directly and indirectly. This necessitates scrutiny of how these goals and targets can be most effectively achieved to maximise benefits and minimise negative consequences. Analysis has shown that the anticipated benefits of each goal can only be achieved by a holistic approach that considers the SDGs as an interlinked set. A systems approach is one helpful way to set out the SDGs and understand their influences on each other. There are many ways to undertake a systems approach and the UN Economic and Social Commission of the Asia Pacific conducted workshops to showcase these methods in late 2016. I presented one approach based on the research at my university, the University of Queensland, from an Australian perspective for implementation of the SDGs. My colleagues and I developed a visual representation of the SDGs to illustrate the pattern of interlinkages to enable comprehensive SDG attainment. Our intention was to produce findings to assist and better clarify the priorities for action and funding.
We also sought to identify links to existing policy through a whole-of-government approach. Very briefly, our results show that the goals for global partnerships and climate action were recognised as major and overarching influences and were thus positioned at the top of the diagram. These were considered as enabling goals that generally influenced all of the other goals through a range of complex links. The SDG for partnerships was also considered to influence the priorities of international aid spending, thus facilitating the attainment of the other SDGs. After much debate during the workshop, the goal for health and wellbeing, SDG 3, was identified as being influenced by all the other SDGs. This reflects the interdependency of health outcomes on the range of physical and social aspects, including most directly from clean water and adequate sanitation and reduction of hunger and malnutrition. When looking at this diagram, it's important to remember that this approach could be rerun at several scales to produce a different looking diagram relevant to implementation tasks at different levels. For example, climate change issues at a global scale or policy at a national scale and community participation at a local scale. The SDGs remain a live conversation for the signatory countries at many levels. At an international level, high-level representatives continue to meet to clarify the ambitions, scope and funding to provide direction towards attaining the goals. At a national level, government agencies have been assigned carriage of the SDGs and are working through implementation of the goals, as well as considering how aid funding to other countries can be aligned to the SDGs. In my country of Australia, this requires some consideration of our Indigenous population and the disadvantage that they face. The SDGs provide a focus on reducing or eliminating this disadvantage. At a more local level, organisations such as local governments are aligning their work plans to the SDGs. They're also engaging in debates to ensure that the indicators to measure progress against the SDGs are relevant to the local context and priorities. So we have seen that the UN Sustainable Development Agenda, signed collectively by 193 heads of states in late 2015, proposes an ambitious range of goals. We can all keep the original focus in mind as we each work to attain them. A quote from the UN Agenda document, We resolve between now and 2030 to end poverty and hunger everywhere, to combat inequalities within and among countries, to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies and to protect human rights and promote gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, and to ensure the lasting protection of the planet and its natural resources.